Hey, I'll see you on tour in Las Vegas, Chicago, and Grand Rapids in Chicago. It's stand-up and a live panel show. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets, and make sure you go to JimmyDoor.com. And now I, you tell me that Martha Raddus and George Stephanopoulos is saying that Trump's rhetoric is what brought this on. Yep. So I'm going to yep. show you what the Democrats have been saying. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there's unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something wow. about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. You would have been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Take a look at what happened. Oh. So you think that? So you, you think George Snuffleupagus is going to show any of that uh, c- coverage? Any of those, that kind of insane incite, inciting violence rhetoric? That that whole thing well, that Trump Trump and Trumpers want to start a civil war. The people who want a civil war, and if there are people. It's the billionaire class because chaos always favors the establishment. And so if they can mm-hmm. keep us divided and hating each other and and keeping our mind on Christian fascism instead of the fucking oligarchy, uh, that that's what serves the establishment. And so well, and that's the kind of rhetoric that does that. If anybody wants a civil war in this country, it's the establishment. It certainly isn't uh, P- MAGA or regular citizens. Go ahead. Well, the the media is gonna is gonna triple down on the Stephanopoulos Raditz take, just like they tripled down on RussiaGate. A big part of why RussiaGate caught on the way that it did was you had such strong mutually aligned interests between the DNC and the media to avoid culpability for the election of Donald Trump. They had to focus on this conspiracy theory about Russia, or they would have had to acknowledge the billion dollars in free advertising that they gave to Donald Trump. If you look at every factor in his election in 2016, if, if you're being honest about it, the media was the single biggest factor in Donald Trump becoming the president, covering his empty podium, obsessively talking about him constantly is a, is. The main reason he got elected, that was why they were all over Russiagate. Now that this has happened, which they clearly have some responsibility for in terms of the atmosphere that they created, they have to pull a Karl Rove and throw it back onto their opponents. They have to throw it onto Trump and Mag. Well, you created a violent atmosphere. They're not they they don't do self-reflection. Yeah, uh, and get. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go no, you, you go did ahead. Did you see the video I sent you? Did you just send me a video? Yeah, I, I texted you the Raditz thing. 
Um, oh, that might be what you're oh, here it for. is. Okay, yes, thank you. I will get this in a keynote right away. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, what what the 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 con that they have pulled off is convincing half of this country that the reason the country sucks is because of Trump. The, the this country sucks because you have to fight with insurance companies to get the health care you need. You have to compete with the Vanguard Group if you want to buy a house. This country sucks because we attack countries around the world that want no trouble with us whatsoever. We overthrow governments that want no trouble with us whatsoever. We're funding the mass slaughter of innocent men, women, and children in Gaza right now. This is why the country sucks. We attacked Iraq on false pretenses. We turned Libya into one of the most prosperous countries in Africa. Uh, We turned that into a failed state with open-air slave markets. That's why this country is fucking horrible. The country is not horrible because of Donald Trump, but the media has convinced half the country that the reason uh, this country is in the shape it's in is because Donald Trump came along and ruined it. And uh, that does contribute to an atmosphere where something like this can happen. Now, once again, I'm for free speech. You should be allowed to call Donald Trump Hitler if you think that he is Hitler. You should be allowed to do that. And I wouldn't say anybody is legally on the hook for, you know, something when it happens because they said that. Right. But if we're going to talk about cooling things down so this doesn't come to a head and this doesn't get to a, a point where we're in a civil war, which, by the way, the liberals will not win. That's another thing. It's not prudent yes. for them to call for a civil war. Um, yes. Then we ought to talk about how we can tone things down so that violence does not happen. Because, as Jimmy, you said, no one wants violence except the oligarchs. They want chaos. That's the only people who actually win in a civil war. And that's why the Black Lives Matter ra- riots were allowed to happen uh, sure. coast to coast for as long as they did. They were encouraged. We saw the pallets of bricks all of a sudden appearing in the middle of nowhere. There's no construction zone and there. Hey, look, there's a pallet of bricks here. Huh. And we all saw the video of the, uh, of the undercover cops dressed in black, uh, going and breaking windows. We always saw that on, on January 6th. We saw that we saw the, uh, head of the FBI, Chris Ray being questioned and, in, uh, in congressional hearing. Did you have, FBI assets dressed up as MAGA supporters inside the Capitol before the riot, and he couldn't answer the question. Yep. We saw that. So they had they had FBI assets dressed up as MAGA people inside the Capitol before there was ever a breach of the Capitol. Why would they do that? Oh, be, so because so the FBI assets on the outside of the Capitol could start a breach of the Capitol in a riot, and then they'd already be in there. Um, so I'll show you one more uh Piece. Let me show you this. There's you want to talk about rhetoric that causes that maybe led to this. Here's Joe Biden's rhetoric that led to this hating half the country. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards. Backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans quote, a clear and present danger to our democracy. But while the threat to American democracy is real, I want to say as clearly as we can, we are not powerless in the face of these threats. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. We told ourselves that American democracy is guaranteed, but it's not. We have to defend it, protect it, stand up for it, each and every one of us. We're all called by duty and conscience to confront extremists who put their own pursuit of power above all else. We must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving American democracy than MAGA Republicans are to destroying American democracy. MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. They spread fear and lies 
Lies told for profit and power. The MAGA Republicans believe that for them to succeed, everyone else has to fail. So that sounds like a president of the United States demonizing half the country. That's what that sounds like to me, saying your enemy is the uh, is your neighbor. They don't they don't. I mean, that used to be not OK in political discourse before to say that your political, not only your your political opponent, but the people who support and vote are going to vote for that person, which is half the country are enemies of our own democracy. Like to me, I don't even think Trump ever said that. Maybe he did. But that seems crazy. What? what let me throw it to you, too. Well, in 2016, there was the question, are there, quote, you know, hidden Trump voters out in these rural areas who are going to come out and prove the pollsters wrong because they're not showing up in polls because they've never voted before. They've never participated in the Democratic process before. And the question is, will they show up this time? And they did. And um, amongst the. I would say elites amongst the establishments in both parties, there's this great resentment that a bunch of people who never showed up to vote anymore showed up to vote for Donald Trump. They really resent that. They really resent having to compete with this new crop of people who are all of a sudden voting and threatening to vote out their candidates. Um, and so uh, that's where I think a lot of it comes from. It, it, it comes from, uh, a sort of presupposed attitude amongst people, you know, like Joe Biden and like the Mitt Romney's, like the Lincoln project people, like the never Trumpers, uh, th this attitude that who are these people showing up and disrupting this math of ours? Because the way we always right. had it was, it was Gore versus Bush, Romney versus Obama, Clinton versus Dole. We could live with either outcome because the people voting are people who we know. They're the people who we invited to the party. And all of a sudden, all these people showed up in 2016 all at once and voted for Donald Trump. We never had to give a shit what they thought because they never showed up. Now they're here and we can't get rid of them. We can't shut them out. And that's where a lot of that comes from, I think. Well, I, I think the Democrats were working their way up to this kind of rhetoric. They just needed the right heel to attach it to because you have biden going up talking about melba toast mitt romney he's gonna put y'all back in chains that's right yes mitt romney yeah and i <laughs> i read joss whedon did a whole video about how you better learn krav maga because if mitt <laughs> romney takes over we're gonna live in an apocalyptic hellscape they were dying to attach this rhetoric to somebody that it would fit more easily onto than mitt romney he of the dog uh, strapped to the roof tails uh, and Trump walked in, man. He was their perfect heel for their wrestling narrative. The, the bad wrestler. He was the bad wrestler they were waiting for all these years. Hey, I'll see you on tour in Las Vegas, Chicago and Grand Rapids in Chicago. It's stand up and a live panel show. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets and make sure you go to JimmyDoor.com.